that this type of endgame should be studied for people who are above the 1,000 level USCF rating category, and that's probably good advice, but there's no reason not to try to learn it if you're under 1,000. Um, this is like the basics of King and Pawn endings, and um, it's always useful, so whoever wants to watch this lecture, I would recommend it. So the, there's a bunch of rules that you have to follow in King and Pawn versus King ending, and um, they'll tell you whether or not the game will result in a tie or a win for the side with the pawn. So in this position, um, if it's white to move, it's a draw, and if it's black to move, it's a win for white. So the first rule that we can follow is if the side with the pawn approaches the seventh or second rank with check, then the game is a draw. So pawn to e7 check, the game is a draw. The king will go to d8 to e8, and now the king um, can either stalemate with king e6 or uh, leave the pawn, in which case um, the pawn gets captured. So, so that's something just to keep in mind, and you might want to write that down. Um, now, if we were to look at the position, um, now I just have to make a few moves to waste the tempo. Um, okay, now in this position, it's White's turn, and uh, we see that if White approaches the seventh rank without check, then White will be able to promote the pawn. So those, that's the second rule. So now in this position, the d7 square is guarded, so it's f8 and d8, and so the king must go to f7, and now king to d7, and the pawn will be promoting very soon, next move. So when we're looking at a position that is not as simple as um, one like this, uh, we have to keep this ending in mind um, because it's basically adding on to this pattern that we'll be able to understand whether or not a game will result in a tie or a win for the side with the pawn. Okay, so now I want to go back to a starting position and this will... Um, and I, I want to go through um, what situations are a draw and what situations are a win for white in this position. So here, um, in this lecture, I'm going to talk about the principle of opposition. And opposition is something that if, you, if, if white is able to get opposition, then white will be able to win the game. So opposition is a concept in chess where you are able to, uh, where, where one side is able to advance into the other side's ranks. So now we notice in this position, both kings have control of these three squares. And now to have opposition means two kings are opposed like this, right next to each other. And if you have opposition, it's your opponent's move. So the thing that if it's black to move here, black will have to give up one of these three squares. So um, that would mean that white would have opposition. Uh, first, we're, we're going to go through, um, I guess first we'll go through the win for white. Um, and so that would be, so in this position, if black is to move, white has opposition, and therefore white will win the game. If this position, if the position were white to move, uh, black would have opposition and it would be a tie. So I have to move up around the pieces. Forgive me. So okay. Um, so now I just had to switch things around. So now it's uh, black to move, and I'll go through how it's how you win the game in a position like this. So the point though is that these three squares, both kings are guarding, and once um, 
black will have to give up territory because white has opposition. Uh, and you get opposition by being directly in front of the other king. Um, there's other forms of opposition, but that's not for the content of this lecture. Okay, so now we, we can make all moves we'll lose, so we'll just go through any one of them. Um, king to d5, and now the way to advance the pawn is go king to f4. Um, and now in this position, um, the, okay, you have to, when you're looking at king and pawn versus king, one of the most important things to always keep in mind is um, this is another rule. So we've gone through a few. That it, um, a rule is that if the king without the pawn can get in front and blockade the, the square in front of the pawn, then the pawn will not be promoted and it will be a draw. So the fight for the square in front of the pawn, it, uh, which is demonstrated through the fight for opposition, is uh, the fight to win the game. So now one thing we should notice though is that if, if the white king is able to control the queening square, then the pawn will be promoted because the black king will not be able to stop the pawn promotion. So in this position, um, uh, we, I mean, uh, uh, the best defense is probably a move something like this. Um, the move king to uh, d4 would make things probably a little easier after e4. And now, now notice the king can't go here. So now it'll go there, and now this is this is necessary. King, king to um, e5. I, I want to go through as many moves as possible because this is really difficult at first. But once you get the hang of it, it, it becomes second nature, and, and you can make these moves and win the game or draw the game in, instantaneously. Um, but but when you first go through it, you have to look at every little every little detail. So um, a position like this. Now, I just want to say that a move like king f5 um, does not do enough to control the square in front of the pawn. In this position, after king to, uh, king to d6 is a draw. But we'll go through more about that later. But, but after king to e5, controlling the square in front of the pawn, um, it's, it's going to be hard for black to even think about... Um, getting uh, anywhere close to this pawn. Um, if the king comes here, then push. And um, and you can see in this position, the next move is going to be king f7. And all three squ uh, squares that the pawn is going to go to are going to be controlled by the white king. And then it's game over. So so even, even in a position like this, after king here, um, the king will come here. And now... Um, Okay, now we see the king is not going to get around this way um, to the pawn, so maybe the king will go here, and now push, and now king here, and push again, and we can see the king's coming here, and the pawn's going to be promoted. So that was a long variation, but it was important. Um, and it's important not to memorize the lines, but memorize the principles behind the lines. Okay, so, so now... So a more accurate defense would be something like king to d6. Okay, and now, um, now an incorrect move for white would be pawn to e4. And now the reason for that is because um, for for black uh, getting the draw here, if they can get in front of the pawn and control the square in front of the pawn, which right now is e5, uh, then the game will be drawn. So in this position, um, white has advanced their pawn too quickly. And after king to, to e6, the game is a draw. Um, so I think, um, so in this position, um, I, think, I think it's better to show how to win first because, uh, because um, it, it's, it's a more fun thing to learn than to how to draw. So... In this position, uh, king f5 is a better move than pawn e4. And now, now if they go king here, um, we can go here. 
And now, um, after king here, you can go here. And after king here, you can push again. Um, okay, so now I want to talk about another really important rule. And uh, okay, whenever the pawn is on this rank right here, so if it's a white pawn, it's the fifth rank. If it's a black pawn, it's the fourth rank. Um, whenever a pawn is on the fifth rank, if um, the white if the white king can get in front of the pawn, it's going to be able to promote. So, and then you don't have to worry about opposition. So a position like this, and this is what we should memorize. Um, a position like this, uh, no matter whose move it is, will always be a win for white. And now, um, w when I was first learning how to how to play these end games, I didn't learn all these rules at once. I, I would kind of learn one thing, and then try to think about it a lot, and then learn another thing. But I think if you learn them all at once, then then it really helps a lot. Um, so. So first, okay, so first we can go through this position with it. when when it's black's turn, that's the easier one. So when it's black's turn, the, the king has to move and king here, and there's no stopping the promotion. The pawn, all the, the pawn squares are 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 protected. So and, and we can see um, if king king to f8, same thing. So so now the next thing we want to go through. Um, is this position, now I'm just going to make up some moves just so I can make it um, have uh, have it be white's turn. Okay, now in this position, it's white's turn and it's still a win um, because the pawn will, first the pawn will promote without check. And this is just a rule you, ha you have to memorize. So, but you can understand it too and then it's, it's more obvious. So, so king f6. King f8, pawn push, king here, pawn push again, and the pawn promotes. So now we could go through. We could we could try. There's no moves that will that will work for drawing the game here. Um, so let's say let's say after king f6, king b7, same thing. King f7 and the pawn will promote. So now like let, let's let's see if if after king here. Um, what if you played here? This would work because after king here, pawn push and the pawn will promote. So, so that's important. So that's why when I was approaching, um, if, if I, we go back a little bit, um, I was approaching um, this position and I was trying to figure out whether or not this pawn push would result in a, a win for white. Um, because, well, first of all, I looked at this after after king f7, um, the king goes, the enemy, the enemy king goes back to d6, and it, now it's threatening to go to e5 and win the pawn, so the king is forced to retreat and block that, um, controlling e5, and now after king to d7, it's a repeated position, so king f7 will not make any progress. Um, so that was the first thing I looked at, and, um, and so, but then I, I realized that in this position, um, the best move is e5 because uh, the pawn, uh, the king will be able to get in front of the pawn, and the rule about the pawn being on the fifth rank um, and being able to promote comes into effect um, because there's no way to stop that. I mean, okay, now if a move like this were to happen, then king f7 is even better than king to this square. Um, but so king here here and we know no more calculation necessary the game is going to be over if you if you learn the rules well enough you'll be able to confidently play um, e5 in a position like this without without even having to look more than a, another move you know more than a few moves ahead so okay so I think I want to go through a, a little better of a defense for black um, just to give as much trouble as possible Um, so in this position, king f5, king e7, now you kind of wonder what, what to do. So, um, 
In this position, now we have to do a little bit of calculation to figure out what the right move is. Um, okay, so if pawn to e4, well, let's see. So king e5 looks like a good move because um, the opposition is going to be gained by white. And now after king f7, um, once again, we, we can go king to d6, because now after king to f6, pawn to e4, um, there's no way that this, this pawn is going to be stopped from promoting. So king f7, um, sorry, not king here, because this will force the position to be repeated, but simply e5, and we can see we're going to reach a position after king here, where we know it's a win for white. So you do you have to calculate and be able to visualize in the future when you're when you're looking at these positions, because um, that's the only way you're going to know. But um, but here you can kind of kind of think, okay, since in this position it'll be black's turn, you'll have the opposition. Even even if it wasn't, um, and you were to play pawn to e4 here, you would still have the opposition, so it would still be a win for you. Um, So let's see, in this position, now let's say maybe they go here. So now just go king to e4, keeping opposition, and, and now after, now king, king to um, e7, now the move pawn to e3 would be a mistake, and this would lead to a draw because of king to e6. And so... Now, now this position, uh, black has opposition because it's white's turn, um, and there's no pawn move to save them, so this game is a draw. So I've gone through some ways to win it. I'll go through one more way to win this. Um, king e5 here, um, king f6 here, 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 not here, sorry, um, pawn to e5. Let's say king f8, then king d7 wins. Or sorry, king d8, then king f7 wins. Um, so king here, here. And I'll just go through it till the end um, so you can see it. Whoops, there's a... Let's just say they go here. And the pawn promotes. So, okay. So now I want to go through examples of draws. So, okay. So... This is the starting position, and here it's actually um, white to move, and this position is a draw. And now, I want to go through why this is a draw. Um, I guess first I just want to, don't look at these moves, I'm just trying to set up a different, a different position. Um, just so you can, because you you got to, first you got to learn this position. Okay, um, this position, uh, no matter whose move it is, um, is going to be a draw. First, it, okay, if it's white's move, well, it's black's move, so so um, in a position like this, black will go here, and notice how they have opposition now. Um, and also key um, is the fact that black will be able to help to, to control the square in front of the pawn, or at least have some influence on it. So, okay, now if the king retreats, now here's a, a rule to follow for black when you're defending and trying to get the draw. Um, so, I guess we could uh, flip, flip the the board so so you can see it from the other side. Um, so in this position, um, a rule to follow is you always want to, when you can, jump right in front of the pawn. So in this position, the correct move is king to e6. And now, um, and now uh, the king has only one move which is king here or else the pawn will be lost after king here takes. Um, so now we have another rule, and this is really crucial for maintaining the draws, is that, because um, we notice if, if black doesn't make the right move here, white will win. Um, and now I believe there's three legal moves for black, two of them lose. Um, uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. I don't think, uh, not in this position, I think they all draw, but... Um, 
but we have to. The most accurate move is always um, when you're in a position like this, when you have to give up ground as the defending side in this end game, just step directly back, because that way, when the king comes here, then you come here and you can get opposition. So um, these three squares. So just just to reiterate that, um, when when you are forced to give up ground and you're in front of a pawn, any position like this. Um, wherever it is, and and I just want to say that this this lecture is only for pawns on the G file through the B file. If the pawn is um, a rook pawn, an H pawn, or an A pawn, then it really doesn't matter. The game is drawn um, because it's too hard to get in front of the. It, it's too hard to control the squares, the queening squares, for the rook pawns. So just keep that in mind about this lecture. But um, positions like this, with G through B pawns, um, is just remember to step directly back. So King F5, just keep opposition, um, which is getting in front of the king and just controlling this, the three squares the king is trying to control, the enemy king is trying to control. So now after pawn push, um, here, and now this was the position I was trying to say, um, here Black has three legal moves, two of them lose, one of them draws. Um, and so the principle is step directly back, and that's how you maintain the draw. So first we'll go through the losses, which is after king king to, to d8. Now white will get opposition with king to d6. Um, and notice how black loses opposition in this position because it's black's turn, and black has to, to move and give up ground. So now after king to e8, we notice after e7, the pawn gets to the 7th rank without check, so it will promote, and the game is over. Okay, so now we could also go through that. So, but this position right here is a draw. Now king f8 was the other mistake, because um, now after king f6, um, we see the same thing. With king g8, just pawn push. Um, so king to e8. Uh, pawn to e7, and um, the pawn will promote. So, so all the rules kind of build up, but the simpler the the simplest rule is the rule of the seventh rank. If you approach the seventh rank without check, the pawn will promote, and if you appro approach with check, the pawn won't promote. That provides the basis for all of the other rules we're developing. So. The drawing move um, in this position is king to e8. And now the pawn will get to the seventh only with check. So now if king to d5, not even threatening to be more aggressive and go here, you just go back up. And after king here, you just repeat the position. When it's threefold repetition, you get the draw. Um, but after king to d6, now one move loses here, one move draws. King f8 loses after king to d7. So king to d8, maintaining the opposition. Pawn push, it's check. The game will be drawn. So, okay, so when we're defending in an endgame, um, we always want to have these ideas in mind. This is the type of end we want, where um, we get in front of the pawn and we get a position like this. So now we'll go back to the starting position, and this position, when it's white's turn, it's a draw, because black has opposition. Um, and uh, so now let's, let's go through why that's a draw. So king to d3, and now if you're getting the idea of opposition and you see the, the next move, that's great, which is king to d5, and maintaining the opposition. So. Um, in this position, if, if they wanted to make lives easy for black and play pawn e4 check, then we just have a position like this. And now we see that same principle, just step directly back. Um, and we're going to see this, sorry, th we're going to see this um, end game just turn to a draw real quick. And now here's the key moment when stepping back will literally decide the game. Check, so you know it's a draw. So, okay, so king here, so so e4 is the most immediate way to draw the game. 
but let's say they, they were trying to, to be tricky. Let's say they went here. The only way to draw is king e5. And now just, just to say, if you were to go here and they were to go here, now you would be lost because white has opposition in this position. And after king here, uh, king here, king here, king here, um, white is slowly gaining ground. And um, king here, pawn push, and this pawn is going to be promoted. So just go back to the earlier parts of the lecture. If this, this, this should be clear. And don't feel like you have to watch this all at once. Um, but it's, it's kind of like a jumble of information. So once you see the whole thing, um, something in the beginning might make a little more sense if you understand what's, what's at, at the end. So I would suggest watching it, watching the whole thing, and then, um, then maybe, and then testing it out and practicing it a lot, and then come back to it at a later time when, um, when you can and see if you uh, understand it, or see if you understand it better if you watch it again. Um, but also there's a lot of books that explain this too that are really great. Um, so I just want to go through though. The correct move for black in this position after king here is just simply um, king e5. And now we could have a repeat position or they could go here. And now um, and now, if you were to go here, this, this would be losing because after king here, um, you're not going to be able to control the square in front of the pawn. Um, and this is just going to be a problem if you think, oh, you can catch it. Then they go e4, and, and you won't even be able to catch up with the pawn. If you go here, um, uh, I don't. This, this would not be the right move, I don't think. Or I think that might work, but this would also definitely work. So we see a position which we've reached before, and that's a win for white. So... Okay, so this position, just keep opposition, and that's how you maintain the draw. Okay, now pawn to e3, and now, now our job is a little easier, and because we're, we're see we're, we are going to control the square in front of the pawn, and now after king to e5, um, which is the best move, um, king, just to mention, uh, this would be a drawing move because of, I mean, this would be a losing move because of king to e4. This position, if it's black to move, is a win for white. If it's white to move, it's a draw. Um, so king here, and now if we have king e2, then king e4. Um, just getting in front of the pawn, blockade it as much as you can. And... Um, and now if, if we see e4, um, we have that, again, that rule, just step directly back whenever you can um, or whenever you're forced to. And don't, don't even think about going here because this will probably lose. So just step directly back, king f4. Now maintain opposition when you can um, and have your eye on that square in front of the pawn. And now after, let's say, king here, it doesn't matter if, if they go, same thing if they go here, just blockade the pawn, step directly back, uh, pawn push, blockade the pawn, step directly back, blockade the pawn, step directly back, opposition, um, it's white's turn here, white has lost opposition, pawn push, the pawn hits the seventh with check, so it's a draw. After king e6, it's stalemate. So um, that's the important thing, um, is that position, just memorizing, um, okay, like, memorizing, like, this position, no matter, okay, if it's white to move, then it's a draw. If it's black to move, it's a, it's a, um, it's a loss for black. So I just, I want to go through one more example of opposition. Um, so I just want to set up a position. So in this position, no matter whose move it is, uh, it's a win for white. And that's because the pawn is on e2. It doesn't matter. White has a move to waste the tempo and get opposition. The tempo is just, yeah, waste a, a moment of time or a, a, a move. That's what it means, a tempo. So 
Uh, so in this position, um, if it's black to move, we can see something like this arising. Um, and notice this is an example of another type of opposition. It's it's more just uh, the kings are. It's like the kings are uh, have are posing each other, but now the, it's a vertical line, not a horizontal line. Um, but what I did want to go through. Um, just switch around the position. Don't look at these moves. Okay, so in this position now, it's the same position, and it's White's turn. White, the only move that, well, I think the best move is pawn to e3. And now, after king to d6, you just you have to see it just done over and over again, and that's how you're eventually going to learn it and just memorize it. King to d6, king to d4. Um, sorry, uh, king to d5. King to d7, uh, king to f6, and now king here, then push here. And now you know you can safely push it to e5 because of the rule um, of this position, no matter whose move it is, is a win for white. So um, to briefly summarize the rules, just so you, they're ingrained in your head, if the pawn promotes without check on the 7th, then it's a uh, win for the side with the pawn. And um, another rule is um, if you have opposition, you'll be able to better get what you want. Um, if you're trying to draw or trying to win, uh, another rule is that um, when you are the defending side in this type of ending, you should step directly back um, so you can keep blockading the pawn. And, and um, you always want to try to step right in front of the pawn when you can, when you're on the defending side. Um, and then the one I just mentioned about when the pawn is on the fifth rank, if it's a white pawn and the king is in front of it, it's always a win for the side with the pawn, for the white side. Um, so those are just some of the ones that are the most important. And now the best way to get good at this end game is to practice it with your friends because. That's how you're going to figure it out. It's the worst feeling in the world to, to um, have no idea what to do and actually um, like draw one game because uh, you know you if you spend your your whole all your your energy figuring out how to win just a single pawn in a game and you get it to winning position, you want to be able to know how to finish the game and that's why this is important um, because uh, the um, this is one of the most basic. Um, end game print, uh, principles and patterns to know so you can you can do more complicated puzzles with this and um, this is when you begin to study the end game this is one of the first things uh, you should learn after you've learned the basic checkmates like uh, two rooks versus a king or queen and king versus king or rook and king versus king so um, so that that's the end of the lecture and practice with your friends